welcome to Elm Colors. This is Erica. Um, today I am going to do a little playing and swatching of these Nouveau markers. Now I don't know if these have been out for a while, but um, they're brand new to me, so I thought that I would share them with you guys. And um, I did have one. I had this Athenian blue color. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and I did have this one in my craft stash and I had never really used it and I used it on a page recently and I really enjoyed the look of it, the way that it felt going down on the paper, all of the, all of the above. So um, I do, I want to play with these and I've got a couple of different um, ways to use them. I did a little bit of research on how to use these, these markers and I'm excited to share that with you today. So when you purchase these, they do come in sets of three or you can buy them individually. Um, I bought these four sets. I have another one that's on the way. It's not here yet. Um, and then I have um, these two that I bought individually. Um, this is the newest color. This is called Peppermint Cream. Um, so when you get these, they're really easy to take out of the package. It's, all, it's nothing sealed. It's just all kind of folded in there. And then it's got the nice shimmer color on the side here. And then you can just pop the marker. Maybe. <laughs> here it goes. <laughs> you just pop the marker right out. Um, now I have played with this one a little bit, but I wanted to show you guys what it looked like in the package. Um, but when you first open them, they do not have color in the tip. So let me show you what one of those will look like. These are much easier to get out of the package. So here's the tip with no, no color in it yet. Um, and to to load the the ink into it well it's not really ink it's like it's a water-based it says water-based lustrous sparkling color marker pen um, so when you prime the you do have to shake them up first and then you prime the tip by um, pumping it up and down a few times and that's kind of the same thing that you would do with your Posca um, to get all of the liquid flowing into that marker tip and then it's then it's good to go so I'm gonna unbox all of these and then we'll be back and we'll play some. Okay, I got them all unpackaged and primed all of them, but I did leave one to prime. I'm gonna move these off to the side. I did leave one to prime so that you guys can see. So again, here is what the tip looks like when it's not been primed yet. And um, I did give this a good shake, but I'll shake it again just to make sure that it is mixed in really well and then um, then you just press and hold it down and it'll take a couple of seconds to get all of the ink flowing um, this one's actually going pretty quickly and I just push it a few times you don't want to push really hard or like do like a bunch of pushing up and down you don't want to damage the tip of the marker I'll show you guys kind of what it looks like when it starts flowing down. I don't know if you can see where the ink is right there on the edge, but that just means that the, it's not ink, I keep calling it ink, where the fluid is starting to flow into the tip of the. And as long as you're not pushing really hard or um, like I said, going up and down a whole bunch, you should be fine. Then I usually just hold it there until I get a little bit of um, color on my paper. And then I give it a little test run and it's good to go. And it's filled up rather quickly. So we've got, I've got a good array of colors here. I'm gonna swatch those out for you guys really quick on this paper. I will probably make my own swatch for this as well just to, um, just to have a, a more formal, I guess, swatch. Um, and I, like I said, I am missing those other three colors and those are actually my blue colors. So I only really have one blue currently. Um, 
but yeah, so I will um, swatch these out so you guys can see what it looks like and I'll be right back with you. So this is what we've got here. I hope you guys are in frame. There we go. Um, so that is all the colors. They're really pretty. I hope you can see how shimmery they are. Super, super sparkly and fun. Um, and like I said, I've got my blue colors. So this is still kind of almost a turquoisey color, but I've got uh, a set of three coming that has, I think, two blues and another darker purple. Um, and then I really also like the names for these. So, for example, this one is Fired Brick. The next one is Blushing Carmine. Then this one is Strawberry Bonbon. <laughs> Just really fun names. Then we've got uh, this one here. This one anyone is Sweet Apricot. So just lots of fun names and, and really fun colors. Um, and just for the quick swatch, I went ahead and just wrote the numbers so that I have an idea of what I'm what I'm playing with right now. Um, I am gonna color a little bit in a couple different books and do a couple different techniques and hope that um, this works out for you guys so that you can see how these work. Okay, so I'm gonna set this to the side and bring in this book. I have this um, Spirit of Wilderness by Forest Diver book. And it is pr printed on Amazon paper. It's got the black backing. Um, but I typically have good luck with these books, especially when I'm using markers. So I thought I would try it and see how they do. I'm gonna put these, sorry, I'm gonna move these markers around a little bit just so that we can, I can have them easier access. Okay, so I thought that I would just go through and do this part. I might zoom you guys in just a little bit. Hang on just a sec. Okay, so I got you guys a little bit closer, and now I'm just going to go through and see how this does just straight on the paper. When I used this before, I did use um, it over top of a color that was already down on the page. I do want to really quickly put a backer behind this. Oh no, it's the last page, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so there we've got the first color down. You do lose a little bit of the black line if you go over the edge, but you can always go back through with a black marker and fill that back in. Next, I've got a yellow color. It's really only that one yellow color, so I wonder how, if they're planning on bringing any others out. There was one new color that was released recently, um, but the majority of the reviews and stuff that I found online for these were all about three years old. So I'm not sure that they're going to be coming out with new colors. And this is not um, really geared towards um, coloring. This is more geared towards scrapbooking and card making. But I like to use all my supplies in all my crafts. So I figured not only will I use this in card making, but it would be really fun to experiment with it in my coloring books too. Okay, so I think that looks really pretty. I hope you guys can see that shimmer there. It's just super sparkly. Um, let's check out the back. Let's see how, you know, it just did like what a normal water-based marker would do. I don't even know if you can pick that up on camera here. Um, yeah, so that looks pretty good. Um, I do have some other markers that I wanted to play with as well. 
Now these, this is gonna be close up, so I apologize. This is the Crayola Art with Edge glitter markers, and I recently purchased these as well, just to do like a kind of a comparison. And I did use these markers not too long ago on another page. I haven't done a uh, swatch or anything with these yet, but um, it's the same kind of thing. There's a reservoir of glitter fluid and um, a bullet tip. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and color this word stars right here and see how this one does. Now when I used these previously, the glitter showed through more than the actual color did. So I'm not sure how these are going to do in comparison. I just kind of wanted to see. Now the tip on these is not as, you can't get as small um, lines. So I am going over the edges a lot more. Not a super big deal. This probably would be easier <laughs> with a gel pen in these smaller areas, but I do have a different um, technique here in a minute that I want to show you guys too using these kind of markers. Kind of see how that goes. Okay, um, that looks about the same. So yeah, so that, that one did okay. Now you do have, I don't know, I don't know if it's just me, but I can see a little bit of fading in the color here. That's probably just me. But I really like, I this one looks really great. This one is not as, not as good. Okay, so let's try um, one of these other techniques that I found. Well, actually, I kind of want to play a little bit now that I'm in this. So um, let's see how it does on like a bigger, on like this diamond here. Um, let's do, because I'm going to have a nice pretty blue sky up at the top and then down at the bottom I'll have a darker sky. I'll have it fade to like a darker sky down here. So let's do Let's do a, well, let's just keep the, the warmer colors on this side and the darker or the colder colors on this side. So I'm going to do like that turquoise color. So that was, I think that was this Venetian Jade for this first one. So I'm going to just, yeah, and with that nice fine or that nice bullet tip you can get in here and fill this up rather quickly where as if you were going if you were going in with like a, a gel pen it would take you a couple of times to fill that space in and you might end up seeing some lines from the pen okay that looks good and let's try I'm gonna do this purple color now so this one is wild lavender And these are really juicy pens. So a lot of liquid is coming out. Maybe I primed it a little too much, but you can move it pretty, pretty well on the page. that up pretty quick super sparkly gosh I love that okay let's do let's do these this side I wonder how quick that dries let's see let's do a test so I'm running my and I did get quite a bit of glitter on my hand so you might want to let it rest a little bit let's try this up here yeah still quite a bit of glitter transfer but um, still pretty Okay, I want to do, on this side, I think I'm gonna do 
this Blushing Carmine first. I'm gonna do that on the outside edge, on the outside one. golden ochre and do nope not the golden ochre we're gonna do the crushed papaya because otherwise that yellow is gonna be right next to that stars one and I don't particularly want that I love how quickly that fills up that space too I think that looks really fun. Super sparkly. Um, yeah. Now, I did get, <laughs> I don't know if you can see, I did get quite a bit of glitter on my hand. Um, so maybe save the application of these markers till the end of your coloring. Um, but I, I do plan to finish this, this page. I think it's gonna be really pretty when it's done. Okay. Okay, so next I wanted to show you another technique to use these markers that I saw online. We're gonna test this out on this page right here. And basically all you're doing is you're taking the, the marker and then you can use some kind of um, clear um, slick palette and you color right on there and then you take a brush and a little bit of water, which I have right here at the top of my screen. And you can pick up that color. I do wanna dab that off a little bit. Where's my, there it is. I don't want too much. And then I can come in here and just apply the color with a water brush or a brush, paint brush. Now I was hesitant to use my um, aqua brush markers because I did not want to get a bunch of glitter in my tip. That's that's going on really well. I did know um, here that it was stated regularly that the more water you use, the less sparkle that you'll have. But this is a good alternative to, um, I'm gonna make this part. It's a good alternative to those sparkly watercolors if you don't have those. This, this is a good, um, a good way to go. So the other thing that they said to do that was that I thought was really cool was you could take, so let me clean off the palette a little bit. So you could take, so this is the Blushing Carmine and this is the, it's really light, but it's the Strawberry Bonbon. So with the Strawberry Bonbon, it is, it's hard to see it once you get it on to your paper so I'm just gonna color in this part. You can see a little bit of the sparkle, but there's not really a whole lot of pigment there. So what I can do is I can come in here and grab a little bit of this and mix it in, and I create just a slightly different shade of pink. It's a little bit darker, not quite as bright as the, the Carmine, but a nice shade anyway. Oops, get a little bit out of the lines there. 
So, so not only can you change the tones, but you can also create entirely new colors. So for example, you really want a nice green, but you didn't want this one that was more, oh, I guess you, you didn't want, so you want a green, but you don't want this tone and you don't want this tone and you want something in between, but maybe a little bit more yellow. So we're gonna try to mix together this Venetian Jade and this golden ochre. And I'm not sure where I'm gonna put this on this page. I don't want any green on here. Um, let me find another page to add this color. Yeah, this one will work. So again, I get my, my brush a little bit wet and I can come in here and mix some of this down into this. I'm gonna dab off the water that's in your brush and then come in and pick up this color that you've created and then you can just paint it right in. And it does it does um, wear off of your brush pretty quickly. But, I mean, that's the same with any water. You would just have to keep scribbling and keep adding. And, again, with the watercolor, it's nice because you can come in and add different shades. And then you just have this big sparkly. So this is, might not be the best um, book to be using watercolor in anyway, but... I'm hoping that you can see that it's pretty sparkly. And so are these. This book is a lot better to use um, water mediums when you have smaller areas. Um, so let's see, I do like this lavender color. So maybe we'll color a couple of these clouds with this lavender color. Let's see how that does. I'm just going to add a couple of drops of water, clean off my brush. Okay, let's get this other cloud here done. And just like on that other page, the, um, the watercolor on this paper is not, not the greatest, but it gets, gets the job done. I'm gonna add a little bit more water, try to spread out that color a little bit more. And, oh yeah, you can really see that when you add more water, there's a lot less color on that one. So I would need to come back in with some more of the marker and then just mix it in like that. And hopefully I'm not ruining the pages underneath. I'm gonna hold this up a little bit. And just come in and dab it here and there. So yeah, just a fun way to add some sparkle. Okay, so for this last technique, I am going to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna try to make a watercolor background around this flower by using these markers and a plastic bag. <laughs> so, uh, let me, I'm gonna have to probably adjust the camera again, just so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And, um, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, I just moved the marker back just a little bit. Or the marker, <laughs> the camera back just a little bit. Um, I'm gonna grab a few markers. I'm gonna go for, let's see, I'm gonna go for kind of a red and orange watercolor effect. So I'm gonna grab a few of the different colors that I have. Um, let's do some of this one. And I'm just randomly placing them on the bag. Um, what is this one? This is 
the pressed peony. I'm not sure how this is going to go, but we're going to test it out and see. You could also probably use a piece of acetate, um, anything that is see-through and clear and plastic, like um, made with this plastic. Uh, let's grab some of that carmine. Where did that color go? Here it is, blushing carmine. I'm just kind of overlapping into some of those other colors a little bit. So now here's, here's the messy part. So I have this water bottle sprayer and I am going to spray this, try not to get the rest of my page wet, and let it kind of run around the water, run around on it a little bit. And then I'm going to, let's see how this goes. I'm going to flip it and just kind of smush it into the paper on this side. So here we go. Flip, smush. Oh, I got it on my flower. But then I can kind of mess it around a little. I'm gonna lift this up and then I'm gonna dab off some of the excess water. Do my best to get it out of the So <laughs> that looks like a hot mess. <laughs> I wonder if, let's try again. We're gonna try again. Cause I, this is something I wanted to try out and, and we'll see how it goes. Um, let's do it again. I'm gonna go more towards the center of the bag. Maybe that'll be an easier flip so it doesn't go uh, quite as everywhere as it did before. Okay. Um, some pressed peony. And then some of the apricot in there. It would probably help if I had this clipped down too. So it doesn't move while I'm trying to do it. Let me see if I can find a clip, hang on. Okay, I got a clip. So I've got that clip down. I'm gonna spray this a, a couple of times. Let it run around a little bit. Not sure if I have enough water on there. One more spray, just to make sure. Cause this book will take water pretty well. So. Okay, we're gonna flip. Oh, this one's not as runny, nearly as runny. Um, so let's do it kind of off the page a little bit here. And I'm just gonna smush those colors around. And I can get it down into the seam a little bit more. I might have a lot of those um, marker lines showing because I didn't have quite enough water but we'll see when I lift this up. So lift it up. Actually, not bad at all. And we're gonna, I think most of the color that I'm putting down should be able to come off or should be able to be covered up with um, colored pencil, especially if I pick a darker color. So the other thing you can do is you can take the leftover color that's on here, give it a few more sprays um, let's, I'm going to move this sky over just a little bit. I'm going to try to add these colors in here. So then I can add a few more colors in. So if I didn't like the way something looked the first time, I can come back in and add more color. And anywhere where you've got little pools of water, you just dab it away a little bit. Well, I'm gonna play with this. I will film it so you guys can see how it turns out. And um, yeah, and then I'll be back with you.
Okay. So that experiment didn't go quite as planned. <laughs> Took a little bit longer than I anticipated and didn't turn out quite the same way. This is still not dry. It's very wet still. Um, but I think that I can make it work. So I will um, color this off, off camera and um, let you guys know when I think when I come back. We'll see how it goes. All right. See you soon. Okay, so here it is, colored in. Um, because I put so much water on this page, it's super buckled. Um, but I know that over time, especially once I color on the back side of this, it should straighten out quite a bit. Um, yeah, so it's super shimmery and sparkly. I hope that you guys can see some of that shimmer and sparkle on the page. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about it. It's not my favorite work for sure, but I feel like maybe I could do something else to the background to, to try to save it. If not, I can always black this out. Um, but I really wanted to try something different just to, just to see how it would work. Um, but now I know that it's definitely a better idea to just straight <laughs> watercolor with it. Um, but yeah, I liked my little my little fairy. She turned out pretty cute, and I tried to keep with the same color scheme as the background for the flower. Um, so yeah, um, I do have a couple of little rubber stamps that are like butterflies that I might do like a little design with around, and then and then we'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, so there's that. I did want to show you, I did get the um, color swatch page printed out, and I also swatched those Crayola markers that I showed earlier. These are the colors that are in that. There's eight colors. Um, and I got my three new, so it was this one, this one, and this silver one, the three new Nuvo markers that I was waiting for. Um, again, all of it's super sparkly and fun and pretty. Um, this is what those look like on black paper it's really just straight glitter I mean there's a little bit of a tint but there's hardly any pigment showing through on those um, but overall I like the marker I like that I can add a lot of glitter in a little amount of time um, I'm not sure that I would use it um, the same way again on a background and I probably should have practiced that before I just did it on a page but sometimes I'm just impatient I just want to do it um, so yeah, so I hope you enjoyed, um, learning a little bit more about these markers. I hope you like them. Um, these are definitely things that I will use in my pages going forward. Um, and I hope you liked watching my little experiment. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me today. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.